Hi there once again and welcome to another Espresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is the second and final part in my series on creating a safe combination lock. Now, at the end of the first tutorial, we got things as far as you see here. So we'd set all of this up, we'd put a controller in, and this will only be a temporary measure, we will be losing this in the second tutorial, but we'd got it to the stage where we could actually reset things and then get them back going again. Now if we just have a go at this, we can see that everything is working, all the disks are moving as they should in order for us to be able to set things up in order to actually unlock the safe as it were. So all of that works, but if we go back to the controller and we hit the reset here, the first disk is being left in its final position and we have to click this again to bring it back to its initial position. So that's something that we need to sort out and that's going to be our first task within this second tutorial. But if we just take a look at where we are going to end up, so I've got another file here. Now if we just go back to the beginning of the animation and we play the sequence, you can see what's going to happen. There we go, the locking bar moves once the safe can be unlocked and the discs actually react accordingly as they would and then we light this up here and grey this out. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial, so without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. I'll bring in a null and we'll correct this dial and disk one problem with this lag problem. Drop this down here and we'll rename it D for, di for, for dial and D1 for disk one. And then all we're going to do is drop these two in here. In our Espresso expression, in our first linked list here, we can remove disk one and place D and D1 in there. And in our second linked list, we can remove the dial and do the same, just drag D and D1 into there. Okay, so we've got it that far. Let's just see if this actually works. We'll just select the controller just to make sure that we're not in reset mode. So we'll select free mode. And then we'll see where we go from here. Let's select D and D1 and see what happens. So we can see that that's working nicely. Move this back over here. Just go around to there, somewhere there, and then somewhere there. We can see they're all aligned and now we'll set it back to zero. So let's select the controller, hit reset, and it's all perfect. We can see that our disk one and the dial are back to zero. That's perfect. So that's all solved and working as it should be. Now the next thing to do is some housekeeping. We need to do some more grouping and we need to get things sorted out in order to make the actual final step of this actually work. So we need a couple more nulls. So we'll bring a null in and this null actually needs to be grouped into disk two and then zeroed out because we want this to actually be a controller for the rotation when the actual bar is moving. So what we're going to do is give this well, eventually we're going to give it a target tag, but not quite yet because we've still got some more work to do. But anyway, we've got it in the correct position. It's grouped where it needs to be. And you'll see why in a few minutes time. But we'll take this out of here and we'll rename it Rotator. And then we'll create another null and this null we can leave where it is. It doesn't really matter where this null goes and we'll simply call this position. Or in fact, what I'll call it is holder because it's gonna hold the position. And that's all it's gonna be used for. And what we'll do, we'll just drag this down here and leave it there. And we'll also bring in another null Again, it can stay where it is. It's not a problem. And we'll simply rename this one lock. Drop this above the rotator. 
and then what we will do is drag that into there so that we've got this hierarchy here and then we can drag everything else that we've got here into the holder so that hierarchy is quite important okay so that's ready to go for the next steps now the next thing i'm going to do is actually drag well in fact what i'm going to do with the rotator what i can do is bring in a cylinder wheel in our object tab here we will make this plus Z radius 0.5 and length 6 one height segment should be perfectly ample and we'll leave it at 16 rotation segments we won't bother to do anything clever with it and we'll drag this into the rotator and then zero it out so we don't want it at minus 8 we want it there now, what we also need to do is take this out of here for now and we need to actually make it rotate to around 36 degrees. Now, in order to do that, what actually we need to do is bring in another null, drop it into the rotator, zero out, then take it out of there, drop the cylinder into it. And then what I can do is move the cylinder upwards so that it's just above the discs. Let's just see where we are. We can go a little bit higher than that. Somewhere around there. So that it's just literally just above those discs. And then with the null here, we can rotate this around its rotation B 36 degrees. So if we just type 36 degrees in there. And this is the position where I want the actual slots to be when the thing is able to be opened okay so that's set up where it needs to be initially now we can drag this out of the null and the null has served its purpose now we can just get rid of that so what we need to do is command drag to, to create a copy of uh, of this cylinder here and let's just go into our front view so f4 hit h so that we could see everything now i want this just about on the zero point there and by eye that's fine that's that'll do perfectly well for us oops don't want to do that let's go back to our 3d view so f1 so we've got the first two parts of our locking bar ready to go now we may as well make the actual side pieces for it as well so we'll bring in a, uh, a square so or a rectangle as i should say it, it is a square but it's a rectangle if we use the official language so we'll bring the rectangle in and we'll think about grouping this. So we'll drop this into our cylinder and zero it out. It needs to be changed, I think, in its orientation. Let's just make it smaller first, though. If we make this 1.5 by 1.5, actually, its orientation is fine. And then all we need to do by eye, if we just move this to somewhere around here, in fact, I'll switch to my right hand view. So F3 object, we can see where we are. If we just bring that near the edge of the cylinder, that's perfectly good. And then what we can do, we're grouped, where are we? We're grouped into our, which cylinder have we got? Yeah, we're grouped into that. That's good. If we just zero out on the actual rotation it's pointing towards this one which is what we need to do and then with the object tab once again what I will actually do is increase the width just to 2.5 that's that's fine for now and then we can add rounding that's done that let's get a little bit closer so we can really see what we're doing and with that done what we're now ready to do is hit C to make it editable go into points mode and what I'm going to do is select one point and then Command A to select all points. Control click and optimize because there are extra points in this that I don't want. So then they're now gone. And then we can select our three points here, go into our right hand view, or rather our front view, so F4. And again, we'll get closer to our object so that we can see and then again by eye I'm just going to drag this so that it's somewhere near there it needs this point effectively needs to line up with the center points of the 
cylinder. But by eye is perfectly good. And then we can do the same with these. If we just select these, that one, that one, and that one, we can drag these towards our other cylinder and do the same thing. Just drag those down. And somewhere around there will do nicely, I think. Hit F1 just to go back to 3D view. And then all it is to finish off the profile is, is a couple of circles. So we'll bring a circle in, drop this into our cylinder, zero out. Or rather, let's have a look, where are we? Yeah, we need to zero out in the Y. Um, and we need, well, actually, what we really need to do is drop that into the rectangle in order to get the position Z. So we'll just zero that out. And that should be correct now. I think, yeah, that should be in the right place. And it looks as if it is. Fantastic. So all we need to do now then is, let's have a look. What have we got? Just turn that to zero. And then we can command drag to get the next one into position. They're all a bit big at the moment. They're far too big. So we've got to deal with that. So if we've got that there, we can also drag this into this cylinder now and we can work out where it needs to go. So our position X is the probably the important bit. Hey, let's have a look, see where we are. Let's just make sure that we get this in the correct place. Yeah, position, I'll just change the position X. That should be okay. As long as that's in the center of there, which it is. It's, dead center. That's fine. That's perfect. That's in a good place. So we've got that actually sorted out and we can just drag this under there. In fact, drag it out of there. Make the two circles editable. And then we can, I think I'll put the rectangle at the top, select all of them. So shift select those two. And then we can connect objects and delete. So we've got a single profile now take this out of here for a second and drop it into with the option key held down and extrude. It's much too big. In fact, I'll, let's have a look, see where we are. I think that's, maybe that's something like 0.3. Hold on a minute, there's something a bit strange gone on there. What's happened there? That's really odd. Let's take that out of there for a minute. What on earth has happened there? What on earth has happened there? Let's take that back. Oh, I see what's happening. Oh, of course, I'm an idiot. The circles are too big, aren't they? They both need to be much smaller. They need to be 0.5. Now we might stand a chance. See. Connect and delete. Take this out of here. Drop that into an extrude. That looks more promising. Object. Yeah, that looks much better. OK, we've got somewhere now. Let's just make that much smaller, something like 0.3. I think we'll be fine for that. Yeah, I, I would think that will work. As long as we're outside the disks, let's just double check. So F3, H. Yep, we're just outside of it. You can see there's a gap. That's fine. Go away. Brilliant. So we've got that part made. And then all we need to do is command drag to copy. And then we can drag our second one into position. Again, I'll switch to my right hand view, so F3, just to make sure of where I am. And that can go around there, and that's perfect. OK, great. So we've got the actual elements that make up our locking bar. We just need to finish off. I'm just going to put a polygon in there. If I just grab hold of, let's have a look, see where we are, a polygon. I want it to be a triangle. We'll put it in plus Z. It needs to be much smaller, of course, something like 1.5 by 1.5 as a starting point. And then we can drag that into position, drag it over here. And we need to rotate it through 90 degrees, clearly. Let's just, in fact, drag it into cylinder one. And what we'll do is zero out the X and Y and the Z We'll make, well, we might as well zero that out, actually, and then drag it back until it's somewhere there. And then all we need to do is rotate that through 90 degrees. So let's zero that out and just let's just rotate it. 
what in fact what I'll do where I've got let's just pull that back a little where I've got the thing at 36 degrees if we just minus 36 plus 90 that's yeah it's the opposite way round so we should have said minus 90 minus 36 minus minus 90 Let's see what we get now that's better and then we can just drag that over here it's a little bit small in the width I think it's either the width or the height so let's do this so just just do the, the height just make that slightly bigger and then we can bring that over in here and that'll be fine that'll work as a pointer that's perfectly good I'm not going to go too crazy with this I'm just going to group it as it is and just leave it there the next thing to do is group everything else that we see here into cylinder one so let's get a hold of these drop them in and drop our cylinder in and then we should be able to rotate now and everything will work so if we move this through rotation b we can see that everything is going to work exactly as it needs to fabulous so that completes the lock bar mechanism now one thing i will do let's have a look see where we are these here i'm just going to make them a little bit more detailed i think the splines are a little bit dodgy let's just see where we are here and we've got uniform splines that's fine number we just increase that if we increase that to about 50 we'll get a nicer result it just gives us a much smoother result around there which is good that's what i'm looking for okay great so that is all looking very good and it's ready to go so let's move on from here the next thing we need to worry about is the orientation of this rotator now I'm going to select the holder and drag it out of the rotator select the rotator again and this time because we've got the cylinder here set up and, and we've got the locking bar all ready to go what I'm going to do is give the rotator a target tag and it's going to be targeting this cylinder so where are we let's have a look see where we are We've got the cylinder here. This is the cylinder that we need. We're going to rotate to face that. And we can see that it's already changed its orientation. If we select our axis tool, we can see that it's looking along its Z axis at this. Fantastic. That's what we needed to do. And then we can drop the holder back into it. And that now won't be affected. So our rotator is looking there. Our holder is where it should be. That's fine. And that's why we've done that hierarchy the way we have. And the lock is there and we can use that basically to position well ultimately we're going to group everything into that lock now and we'll be able to move the lock mechanism anywhere we like in the scene that's going to be our ultimate goal but anyway we've got that done now if we move our locking bar so if we select our cylinder here and we move this we can see that our dial setup is moving and it's actually tracking it and that's what we're going to need to happen when we get to our final stage so that's why we've set that up that way fantastic so that's all working we can move on now and think about working with our espresso expression and extending what we've got here and making this into a bit of a monster although don't be frightened it's not too bad it's not a monster with sharp teeth but before we start working with this expression, there's one more thing that we're going to do to make life easier, and that's work with our keyframe animation. If we select the controller here, we're still in reset mode. We need to be in free mode and we'll select D and D1 because that's what we're going to be interested in working with. Rotation B is what we need to use. and We can record at frame zero at zero degrees. So we've got our first keyframe in. We can then move through to 30 degrees and set this to 54 degrees. That's where we need to go. Now, nothing has really happened, but we'll record there. And if we just run the sequence, we'll see that it works fine. And it set us up to where we need to be. So our first number on our dial would be 51 going towards the right. So you'd go right until you get to 51 degrees for our first setting we then need to move back to our left 
So what we'll do first though is move through to frame 45 and we'll set that at 54 degrees. So we'll record there so that there's a, a little pause between each movement. And then we'll move through to frame 75. And this time we'll set a value in here of 341 degrees. In fact, it will be minus 341 degrees because we're going to be moving in an anti-clockwise or counterclockwise if you're in the, in the United States direction. So we've got that there and we can record. So let's go back to the start of our animation, play through and see what we get. Just play that from here. In fact, what we need to do, go into the controller and we need to reset. That's fine. We still need to do that at the moment. OK, let's just play the animation now and see what we get. So we go to there, we rotate back and you can see the speed at which that moves. It's quite fast, but this still works. The collision detection is still working fine and we've got both of those now set to where they need to be for the unlocking bar to move. So we've got it that far. Let's select D and D1 again. In fact, what we'll do, we'll reset. In fact, well, no, we'll leave it there because we're OK at the moment. We need some more frames. I'll set this to 200. So we've got, if we skip through, we've got to there. So we're on 75. We now need to go to frame 90. And we'll set once again to, to minus 341. So we'll record there. And then finally, we can move through to 120 frames. And we can record at minus and it will be 209. And it's quite a funny number I've got here, which is 0.5365. You don't have to be that accurate, but that's the number I've got here. So I'm going to put that in there. And we can see that that's moved our third and final disc into the correct position. So we'll record that there and if we just go back to zero and reset let's play the animation and we can see that's working fine great so that's our keyframe animation all set up and working out for us the next thing we need to do then is to open the espresso editor and start building the rest of our expression Right now, what we're actually going to be interested in now will be U1, U, U2, that should be U2, and that should be U3. Let's make those correct. So we've got U1, U2, and U3. We'll bring all of those in, so I'll command select them, and we can drag them into here. So they're, they're ready to be set up as needs be. Let's just set those with a bit of distance between them. What I'll also do, I'll just come up here, we'll move this all down a little bit because we do need to clear some space. Move this up here and I'm also going to bring in this lock null, bringing that in as well. Now in our U1 and U2 and U3 I need coordinates, global position Y for each of these. And finally, with the lock, because it's not parented, I can just use position Y. Oh, those are ready and set up. Just make those a little bigger. Fantastic. So we've got it that far. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in three math nodes and they will be set to subtract in their function. So let's just command drag to copy another couple of those. Set these up. And what we need to do is plumb each of our global position Y output ports into the input number ones of each of these. So we'll just get a hold of that if I can. Let's got that in there. Grab a hold of that one, plumb it in there. And then finally, we can connect the output of the lock to the input twos. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to be able to ultimately move this around. So we want to be able to grab hold of this null 
and move this anywhere we like in the scene and for everything to work. And in order for that to be the case, we must subtract the position Y of this lock null from the global position Ys of each of these. If we don't do it, you can move it in the Z axis, you can move it along the X axis and everything will work fine. But if you move it along the Y, it won't work. So that's why we're doing that. Moving on from here, we need six compare nodes. So we'll bring one in. So logic compare. And we'll copy this six times and then we can think about setting it up. So we've got two there. Let's just command drag to copy another two and command drag once again to copy another two. And now we can think about what we're doing with this. Now, what we're actually interested in is the position wise, as, because we've got them here, of our U1, 2 and 3. If we select our front view, so F4, we can see that these circles here, they are U1, U2 and U3. So if we just have a quick look at where we are in our position Y, at the moment, we look well, I think we're looking at position. Let's just see if we can check these with a, a result node. Let's just bring one of those in. And if I plumb this in here, let's see what we've got. Now, let's have a look. We need to make that slightly bigger so that we can really see what we've got. Now, we can see that that's reading 8.036. So when we look at this in here, we're actually looking at the position as opposed to the global position. So we're not getting the true result. So we must check what we've got using result nodes. So we've got 8.036. Let's check to see what we've got here. 8.038. So they're not absolutely the same. And I'm showing you this because it's important that you actually realize this. Now, let's just drop that in there. And that one's different again. So no three or no two, none of them, basically, none of them are the same. And in reality, that would be the way this would actually be, because you wouldn't be able to set this up absolutely perfectly. So I'm not too worried about that. That's fine. That works. That will work OK. But what we've got to do is use these numbers. And when we plumb this into here and into here, we've then got to set these up accordingly and decide what we're going to do with them. Now, the first one, I'm going to set the function to less than or equal to. And the value, we've got at the moment a value of 8.036. So we'll say less than or equal to, and I will put 8.08 in there. So I'm going to say if it's less than 8.08, .08, well, that is because 8.036 definitely is. And in this one, it will be greater than or equal to. And in here, 8.03. I'll go closer with that. So I'm setting up a degree of tolerance here because we're working with very fine values. So we need to do this because it just won't be accurate enough if we simply say equal to 8.036, etc. We won't get the desired result. But that's set that up OK. Moving on from here, let's place this in these two accordingly. Once again, this needs to be less than or equal to. This needs to be greater than or equal to. And then we can set them up. So in here, again, I'm going to put 8.08. .08. And in here, 8.03. That will work OK for us. 0.3. And then the final one here, it's going to be the same deal. We'll make this less than or equal to, this greater than or equal to. Plumb the output of 
this into here and this into here and now we can set these two up so we've got 8.077 so on this occasion I'll say 8.09 in there to make it slightly less close and this one again it will work fine if we say 8.03 so we'll put that in there. So our compares are now all set up and we've just allowed this little bit of tolerance to make sure that we get the desired result. And you can go tighter with those tolerances if you wish, but it does need to be relatively accurate. Moving on from here, we need three bools. So we'll bring those in. drop another one down here by command dragging and another one down here so they're now set up and they are ands they need to be ands in the function and we can just simply plumb the outputs of these into them and we've done that part we can command drag to create another one and this needs three inputs and we can place this here and plumb the outputs of each one of these bools into here. So what we're saying then is once all of these conditions are satisfied, so the, this and this, if, it's, if our u1 is between these two values, u2 between these two values, and u3 between these two values, all of these will be true. And then we can plumb these into here and then this when all of these three are true the output of this will be true we'll get a one at the output that's what we're looking for so let's see where we are if we just remove the results now we don't really need them we'll just take the last one and we'll plumb that into the output like this and at the moment we're getting a one and of course we will because our discs are in their final positions but if we reset things, if we select our controller here and we reset and go back into free mode, let's see where we are now. If we select animation refresh, just take that away for a second, plumb that into there. We can see that we're getting a zero. We've got a zero at the output. So that's all working as it should. Let's just see what we can see just make sure everything is set up the way i want it to be yep i think we're okay move this over a little bit further move this out of the way and let's just run the sequence and see what happens so we're running through oh no we're not actually because we've reset we need to be in free mode let's just run back to the beginning let's play through and there you go, you can see the number one appear when all of the nulls are aligned, U123. So that is working fine. That's doing exactly what we needed to do. The problem with it is that if we get a hold of our bar, we want our lock bar. So in fact, what I'm going to do with my cylinder here, I'm going to group that into a null and what I will do is just drop everything out of there for a second just put it there and then this null I just want to set it to zero okay and then bring this up to the top drop everything into it and we'll call that lock bar assembly okay so that's all set up that's zeroed out. Now, if we get a hold of this, if we start to rotate this, or we'll rotate it in the correct direction, we can see, ah, as soon as those disks start to move, we get a zero in here. Because of course, these are no longer true then because the numbers just don't, don't add up. They don't work out. So this will only be true for a very brief moment in time. That's all this is going to be true for. But we need a one, basically, at the output of this 
constantly and we can't do that here. So how are we going to go about doing it? Well, if we just reset, what we're going to do is make use of a very, very small amount of Python. So we'll bring in a Python node and now we can think about what we're going to do with this. So if we get a hold of our Python node here, we can start to think about the input and output stages. Well, we just need to delete all the ports and start from scratch because we need integer ports. So we'll bring in two integers at the input stage and another at the output stage, and then we can rename them. So we'll rename this port and it will be frame. Our second port will be trigger and our output port here we will rename this start okay so we've got it that far now frame as you can probably guess we're going to be using with a time node so I'll bring the time node in Let's just bring that in now this time node is going to have two uses so we'll bring in the frame port and we won't remove the time port because we are going to be using a monoflop and we will need that time port to work with that. Okay, so we'll connect the frame to the frame port of the Python and then we can think about where we're going from here. Now, this bool here, this is going to be the trigger. So we'll bring that into trigger and then we can think about working with our code. We'll switch to a scripting layout just clear this out. We'll select our Expresso again, select the Python node, open in editor, and we're ready to start work. Just leave that over there. Okay, we'll take this line out because we don't need it. To our global variables will also add another called bool and it will be bool with an e on the end because bool is obviously a function now within python so we can put an e on the end of that and we're okay now next thing we need to worry about we can say if frame is equal to zero bool is equal to an empty list and we can also say start is equal to zero. So when we're at frame zero, we want to clear the bool list out and we want our start value here to be zero. Moving on from here, if trigger is equal to, and it will be one, so if our bool here has, has presented us with a one we want something to happen here we can then say if len brackets bool is less than one bool dot append and it will be one so we simply want something placed into our bool list I've put one could be a hundred thousand could be anything but I'm just going to use one. We can then say if len bool is equal to one, start equals one. Okay. And then we can simply finish this by saying else start equals zero and that's as much as we need to put in there so when we've got something in our bool list we want start to be one and of course as soon as this outputs a one that's going to be appended to our start list so it's stored and it cannot be removed until we're at frame zero frame zero so that's going to force a number one to come out of this port for the rest of the animation and that's what i wanted to do I couldn't do it here, but I can do it with this Python. And that's it. That's the Python done. So nothing too painful there. We'll move on now and think about the rest of the Expresso. 
The first thing I'm going to do is just make this window a little bit bigger. Let's just make it maximum, actually. What we can do, let's have a look, see where we are down here. Right, OK, the first thing to do is bring in a compare. So we'll bring in a logic compare. If we let's make that 100% again, that's better. Move this over here. Now, its function does need to be equal to, and it does need to be equal to 0. Now, it's going to be driven by the frame port of the time node. So we'll plumb that in there. And then we can place this just here and think about what we're actually going to be doing with this compare. Now, if we let's have a look, let's just make this bigger once again. Probably going to have to scale things down, I think. Let's just make it a little smaller so that we can see what we're doing. Now, this compare will be used to drive the on of the iteration here. So we'll plumb that in there. So that's one job that our controller no longer needs to do. And we also need it to drive. Let's have a look, see where we are. We've got, yeah, it needs to drive this bottom condition. So we need to drive that with the compare now. So we'll take that down to there. And that's another job that the controller doesn't need to do. Now, let's think about where we're going next. This condition here next to our link list, that needs to be driven by the start output from the Python node now. Don't worry about that too much. All right, that, that will be OK. I'm not too worried about the top of that being a problem. Let's have a look, see where I am. Make sure I've got that correct. Yeah, that is correct. That's where that needs to be. And then the output here, we can plumb this into the not. And again, I'm not too worried about that. That's going to work fine. So we've got that plumbed in there and that should be OK. This, let's have a look and just see whether we've got an issue in here. Let's have a look, see what we've got. The name bool is not defined. Right, OK. Let's just go back to the beginning of the animation. And that should define it. And yeah, and now we've got no, nothing dodgy going on in there at all. So when we are at zero, we definitely want this section of the algorithm to be working. And that's being controlled by the start. We also need to switch this to be using what's coming into this input here from the linked list. But when we're, when we're actually at zero, we've got this here. And we need to switch this on when we're at zero, OK? Or when we've got a zero coming out of here. Because we know at that point that we're going to need to sequence through what we've got in here and pass it through this condition here. So that's going to be working out for us there. And then this condition here, well, we, we need to switch this to zero. So we're going to get a one out of here when, when we're at zero. So that's going to allow us to switch this to allow to use this. It will also switch this on and pass our links through here. And that's all going to be working fine for us. OK, so that is all good. Moving on from here, we can think in terms of setting up a monoflop. So we'll bring a monoflop in. Output from our start will be the trigger for it. So we'll just bring that into there. Our time here, that will be obviously from the time node. So we can plumb that in there. We'll just move that down to there. Move that down a little bit too. 
and then our duration we can set to 60 frames we've got our output port and we need a state that completes the setup for our mono flop so that's ready to go the next thing we need is to bring in a compare bring one of those in and this we will use with our Python here we're going to be using this to drive what's going to be happening here so our, our compare node here will will plumb the start into input number one and this needs to be equal to one So when we're equal to one, we want something to happen. The next thing to do is bring in a range mapper. So we'll bring one of those in, come down to calculate range mapper. And this, we can plumb the output of the state here into the input. Just bring that up there. And then we can work out what we're going to do. Now our input range, the data type does need to be real. The input range is usually fine. We can leave that as it is. The output range needs to be degree. So our input range is zero to one, so we can leave those as they are, and we need zero, and this we, what we need is minus 18.4 in there. And then we can simply put a basic ease out, easing curve in there. We can just leave that as it is. We don't need to do much more with that. Okay, fantastic. So that's our range mapper set up. Now what we can do, if we wish, is just bring in our cylinder number one here let's just check as we go back into the standard layout here just for a minute let's just check to see what we've got with our cylinder number one well it's it's not set to zero so what we can do is if we just let's have a look see what we've got here we've got everything grouped into it if we just remove those for a second and set this back to zero and then we can bring it back to the top and drop everything back into it. Okay, so that cylinder is ready to go. Now we can, if we just bring this back in, go back to our range mapper, to where we are there. Now if we wanted to, we can just plumb this into the cylinder, into its rotation B. but that won't give us the result that we want because we still need to do a little bit more work. Now, if we do that, it will make it rotate at the correct time. If we just plumb that in there, what we can do if we just run the sequence, we should find that it does rotate at the correct time. Let's have a look and see what happens. No, it doesn't. Okay, so we've still got more work to do. Not a problem. We'll do some more work, but we are definitely getting um, a result uh, let's have a look see what we've got so are we getting a result yeah we are getting a result there so we've got our trigger there and we should be doing the do let's have a look and see why we're not I don't quite know why that didn't actually trigger it should really uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter I mean we can do some more work and then work out the debugging afterwards if we need to but um, let's just plumb that into the state. I just want to see if that actually is doing anything. Let's just go back to zero. And we can see that our output of our start is definitely doing the, the do. It's actually resetting everything without us using the controller anymore. We don't actually need that. It's not actually doing anything. So that's fine. And that's all working out perfectly good for us. Let's just run this again. I just want to see if anything's actually working there. Let's just bring that to there, to there, down to there. Well, we don't seem to be getting anything at the output stage of the monoflop, so it doesn't appear to be getting triggered, which I'm finding very interesting. Let's go back to there. Yeah, it should be. It should be being triggered, that, that monoflop. Oh, it's in normal mode. Let's just make that a one-shot monoflop. Let's see what happens now. Just run that. And there you go. You can see that it's working. But 
it springs back to its initial position, which we don't want it to do. We want to hold it at its finished position. So that's why we've got the compare. Now the compare is in here because that's going to be used when we're getting uh, a one at the input. When this is when this is generating a one, we'll be getting that at the input, and we can then get a get a one at the output, which we can use to switch uh, the first of two conditions. So we've got a condition here. Now this condition is going to contain the start and end, and end points, or end rotation points for our bar. So what we need to do is plumb the output of the compare into the switch, and then we need to set these this condition up. Now input number one will be zero because obviously our cylinder here is starting from zero degrees. Its end point is going to be minus 18.4 degrees. But we can't express that in degrees unless we want to plumb a degree node in. We can we actually need to use radians. So what we're going to place in input two here, we're going to I happen to know that minus and it will be 0 0.3 to one one that's that's the equivalent of eight minus 18.4 degrees in radians so we need to place that in there moving on from here we need another condition so we'll command drag to copy this one now this condition will be driven by the output from the monoflop so when that's one we're going to switch to here and we're going to use the output of the range mapper when it's zero, we're going to be using the output of our first condition. And this piece of logic here is going to allow us to control what happens with our cylinder. We can then just place this over here and output the, the result from this condition into cylinder one's rotation B. Now, if we just close this briefly, go back to the beginning and run the sequence again, we should find that things work properly and they do and, and you can see that the bar is being held in its final position it's working perfectly just drive that through there and stop and we can see that that's that's held and everything is reacting as it should do so that's fantastic that's all working let's just open this up because we've still got some more work to do so we can just take this result away from there We'll leave that one for now, but we'll take it away ultimately. OK, great. So that part of the algorithm is now working. So the bar is moving. It's doing its job. But there may still be a little bit more work to do. For a start, we need, let's have a look and see where we are. Do we need, do we need to do any more? Let's just bring that back to the beginning. Let's just take this back to 3D mode. Let's just see where we are. So that drops down to there. And it's staying there. OK. That's absolutely fine. So those are being held in their final positions. That's really good. So that's all working as I need it to. Let's have a look, see what else I need to do. Do I need to do anything else? I may not need to. Let's have a look. In my original, I did do a little bit more work. I'm just looking at this and thinking, do I actually need to do it? Let's have a look. Let's just move that down to there. It may be that I don't need to do any more with this part of the algorithm. It looks as if that's going to work the way it is. So if that's the case, I'm not going to do any more with that. Let's just run this through. What I'm going to do is in my animate here, in my play mode, I'm just going to make that simple. And just move that through well I mean I don't think I need to do any more there that's actually doing exactly what it needs to do let's just run that to there to there down we go yeah I mean that's perfect that's doing exactly what it needs to do so I don't actually need to do any more work that's that's working absolutely smack on and if we run the animation or return the animation to zero everything gets reset so yeah that's as much as we need to actually do with that part of the algorithm. Down it goes and it stops. Yeah, that's fine. We don't need to do anything else. That's beautiful. Right, so the last thing that we need to do to finish this off is just bring in some text splines. So we'll bring in one of those for a start. 
make this just one centimeter and we can bring it over here just get it into the correct place so let's go into our front view so f4 just bring this down so that it's somewhere there let's just see where we are in, in our top view f2 h and we can see that we just need to move this over to here in fact let's have a look see where we are we just need to make that positioned in our position z where are we yeah i think that's okay actually i think that's we just go back to our three D view. Let's just see where we are. Yeah, I mean that's going to be okay, isn't it? That's looking good. Just bring this up to here, and we can change the font. We'll change that to. Well, I've got quartz in here, so that it looks like a digital readout. So if you haven't got quartz or you've got something similar to it, just select that particular font type the word locked in there and then we can command drag to copy type unlocked here that's perfectly good that's looking fine so we've got those two and then all we need to do is drop both of these into by holding down the option key extrudes they can be just point two they don't need to be much more than that in the offset and we'll leave everything else the way it is so we've got those two ready to go and this we can call locked and this unlocked so they're great the next thing that we can think about doing is with the lock bar we'll drop this into the lock null and we'll also drop these two in there as well the outer ring we can also drop that in there we'll just drop that above the rotator so all of our elements are now in here and if we move this we can should be able to move it anywhere and play the animation and everything should still work and it does that's great fantastic that's all working perfectly well so let's just zero that back out fabulous and now all we need to do is work with changing the colors of these we'll select the espresso now bring in a final espresso tag just move this over here so we've got this is our first this is our second and this is our third we can make this a lot smaller because we only need a few nodes in this particular expression first thing we need to bring in from our lock bar we need our cylinder one bring that in there at the output stage we just need rotation B we need to compare our rotation B so we'll bring in a compare node we need to compare this to and once again it will be minus zero point three two double one that's that or our, our rotation be expressed as radians so when we get a one at the output stage here we will want to bring in a knot we'll, we'll bring that in there and place it up there and then all we need to do is bring in locked and unlocked bring those in there and then at the input stage here we just need display color okay and our colors we, we need to set those up so locked we in our basic here 
automatic and at its display color will need to be red. And for our unlocked, we need green. So those are set up there. We plumb this into here and plumb this into here. And at the moment, unlocked is grayed out, which is correct. Let's just close this down. Run the animation sequence and let's see what happens. And there we go, we've got it. So that's fine. Let's just run that again just to make sure everything is working as it should. And there you go, perfect. So that's all working and that's our final expression complete. And that's all you need to do there to get that to work. Okay, fantastic. So we've got it all working exactly as it needs to. And that is how you go about creating a safe combination lock. And that about brings us to the end of this series. And as always, I really hope you've enjoyed doing this tutorial. And if you've done both parts, I, you know, I really hope you've got something out of them and that they've given you some inspiration and some ideas for things that you can use within your own projects. And if you have enjoyed the video, then please do give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that about brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.